Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, your no-code implementation partner. Today, we're going to talk about a no-code application builder called Knack and why I think it might be a great fit for your next project. And we'll get started with a walkthrough to get you up and running. If you haven't gotten started with Knack, you can sign up for a free trial using the affiliate link in the description below. In the world of no-code, you're oftentimes dealing with two or even more vendors in order to build a no-code application. So an example would be you might be using Airtable as a backend solution. You use it for a database. And then you want to build a client portal. So you use a tool like Softer. Or maybe you're using SmartSuite on the backend and you use Easy Portal on the front end. There's lots of these combinations that go really well together. But at the end of the day, you're working with two different vendors and you have two different pricing plans. And so what NAC does is you can create all of the backend tables. You can create all the fields, everything that you need. And it actually stores the data but you're also designing the interface or the front end for how your users interact with that application. So you don't have to use two different systems. NAC is doing that all in one platform. But the most important thing that I think will resonate with a lot of people is the way they structure their pricing. So many no-code applications deal with a per user, per month type license, seat-based licensing. This is very popular in the world of SaaS. However, it can get expensive really quickly when you're dealing with a large number of users. And sometimes those users only need to do something very simple. Maybe someone logs in and sees a dashboard once a month, but they're still counted as a user. So what NAC does is they actually don't price based on users. All of their plans that they have, you can see bolded right up front, is that they have unlimited users. And this is huge. Now, they do charge based on other things. And one of those is around the database record limit. So you can check that out to see the different plans. One thing that I like is they've got their core plans and they have larger plans. So you could go all the way up to have 1.5 million database records in your database. So there's a lot there if you want to use one of those larger plans. But for most people, you can typically get by with 50,000 or they have 125,000 database records. And then to be able to have unlimited users, we're not talking about $99 a month a user. We're just talking about all in. And so this type of pricing is really attractive to people. Another thing I want to call out is their support plan. This is pretty awesome. If you're paying that $99 a month, that pro plan, you're going to get everything in Starter, which is AI knowledge base form, but email support. You're going to get email support with a 48 hour response time. And if you're paying for that corporate package, you're going to get that email support in a 24 hour response time. So I think that's really powerful, especially as you're getting started to know that the vendor has your back. They've got a support plan for you. Now let's get to the fun part, which is actually building our app. So we're gonna come here, we're in the back end. We call this the dashboard of NAC. We've got some different settings and then we've got our different apps. So depending on what plan you're on, you've got a different number of apps that you can create for your organization. You can click this button to create a new app now, the app is going to be equivalent to a base or to a solution. It's the entire application that you're building for a given use case. Now, we can start from scratch. I typically recommend when you're trying a tool for the first time that we actually use their templates if they're available. So we're going to start from a sample app. And here we've got some different options. Business directory, custom CRM, customer portal is a popular one. I'm actually going to use the one for project management but you can use any of these and kind of follow along as we're going through the process. Once you've spun up your template, you'll see that we're now in this area that we call the builder. You'll see builder.nac.com up at the top. And this is important because this is our backend area where we're actually administrating the application. There's going to be a front end where our clients and our users can log into, but that's gonna look a little bit different than in the builder. Now inside of the builder, we'll see our data, records, tasks, pages, and then we have some configuration settings here. And our data, the first thing that we have is our tables. Now this is going to feel familiar to other applications in the fact that we're calling them tables. These are like objects that we have. So we might have people, or in this case, we're calling them contacts. We have clients, which are our organizations. Because it's project management, we've got projects, milestones, and tasks. And if we click onto any of those, we can see that we have our fields here. Now, for some of you who have used a different no-code kind of tool where it's set up more like a grid, this is going to feel a little bit different because in NAC, what we're doing is we actually define the field types without seeing them on the screen as the grid of information. But we do this because we can actually separate this out from the records where we see that in a moment. So inside of the fields here, we can add a new field and you can see we have a number of different field types to choose from. If you're coming from the world of spreadsheets, this would be like the different columns you have in your spreadsheet that we're setting up. 
And it's really nice because there are a number of different configuration settings that are unique to each of those different field types. For example, we're on a contact and we have their phone number, but let's say we wanted to add an address to this. So if we scroll down, we can see an address field here, and we've got some special options, like we can enable geocoding. So we've got a map and we can view on a map the different locations that we have. We can also enable address autocomplete. Now a more basic field, like a number field, you'll see some other options, such as how do we handle rounding or how do we handle our thousands delimiter? Those of you who are database gurus are gonna be happy that they support equations, which are very similar to formulas in other applications with a number of different functions that you can use to build out those equations. Now, I think most of us in the no-code space can agree one of the most important constructs when it comes to no-code databases is the ability to relate different records of different tables to one another. Now, in some applications, we call this a linked record or a linked relationship. Inside of NAC, we call this a connection. And what I like in NAC is that we can actually see the connections in a special dedicated area on the right-hand side. So what we can do is we're on our contacts right now, and we can see that we have a connection to clients. And when we expand this, this actually describes the relationship. And I like that we don't have to go back and forth between the clients and the contacts to see how that connection is defined. This spells it out. So in this case, this field can connect many contacts with one client record. Or on the clients, we can see we've got the relationship to the contacts, again, the inverse of that. And we can see we also have a relationship or a connection to projects, many projects to one client record. We can define our own connections as well. We can press a plus button and we can say, hey, let's relate those contacts to a different record type here, a different table. And we could say to our project managers, maybe we have certain project managers related to contacts. And we can define this by saying each client can connect with one project manager and each project manager can have many clients. And so we can build those connections in a really easy to use interface. Next to our fields, we have our records. And you might look at it in this kind of grid view and think, oh great, how do I set up my different views that I have? And this really isn't the area where we're configuring this for how it's observed by our end users, how our end users interact with it. You can think of this as the backend location that shows our data that's useful for importing a CSV file of our given data that we have, or we could export that as CSV or JSON, but this isn't how our users actually interact with the data. We also have an area to be able to create tasks. Now, another word I would use for tasks is automations or automated workflows. We can create a new task here and we could run it on a certain type of schedule. I'm gonna put in a sample task here and we'll click to our action now the action here, this happens in a different order. Normally I think of if else type logic, but this is the action and then the when or the criteria. So our actions, we have a few options. We don't have tons of options here, but we could send a custom email. We could update the record. So we could send that email. In the email, we could choose from different dynamic values that we have to be able to populate that as we send it out. And then we could do this based on certain criteria. We could say, hey, if this field value equals this, if the status of the project equals uh, red status and we wanna inform the project stakeholders, then we could send off that email. Now, for those of you who wanna build deeper automations and integrations with NAC, you can certainly do that either with Make or with Zapier and they expose their API as well so that you can create different automations. You can say, hey, if a record gets created, run this logic and update the values back in the system. So if you find yourself ever limited by the task functionality, you can just plug it into your favorite iPass of choice. Now, one more construct that's really important to understand is that of user roles. And so you can see on the side here, we have different user roles. You can create as many user roles as you need. And those user roles define the permissions that we have of who can see what. These user roles are what give us those more granular permissions. So we can say, hey, admins or project managers or employees, you're going to have a different experience in this application based on the permissions that we give you. Now, what I like about this is that these users, these user roles, we can have different fields that we give them. And so we can configure this to what makes sense for the information we wanna track about our users. Now, so far we've talked about our data or our schema, how we set up our tables, we have our records so we can see the backend. We can import and export that data. We have our tasks or our automations. 
And then we have our pages. And this is really where the magic of the application happens. I think one of the best ways to understand the page builder is by interacting with the application on the front end or to see it as the users would see it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll click to go to live app. And this is going to open up our actual application experience that our users are going to navigate through. Now I'm logged in as Sarah Johnson and Sarah Johnson is a project manager. And if you remember, we have that designated project manager user role that we talked about before. So we can configure this experience. We're saying, hey, all project managers are seeing this kind of experience with these pages. So for Sarah, in this case, she can see her projects, my projects. And this displays the relevant projects for her. And then we've got another page for my tasks. Both of these are called start pages. It configures what functionality that we can see. In this case, we don't have any current tasks for Sarah, but it looks like we probably have some previous hours that she logged with some previous tasks. So back inside of the builder, we have our navigation on the left-hand side, and these are those start pages. So we have project managers who can see projects and we can label this how we want to. Within our pages, we can have child pages and we can have different views of the information. So for example, to replicate what we're seeing on the front end, we can click on that My Projects. And so we can see the list of those projects. And then we have these additional areas for viewing project details. So we've got our milestones and our tasks and hours. We didn't dig into that quite enough. So if I click back here on My Projects, I could view this project, open that up. And here we could see Here's those different views that we have of our milestones and our different tasks and hours. And you can see we have forms on these to help us create those new records that we have. And we can visualize this information in these grids as well. And so when we're on a page like view project details, we can add multiple different views. So some web application builders call these components. Some call them blocks. In this case, we call them views inside of NAC. So we could add different views. And here's where we see those different views that we can add. You can see things like calendars and lists and grids. We've got some text. We've got a lot of helpful things we can do from a reporting standpoint as well. And that's how we can kind of mix and match to be able to construct those experiences. Now, one of the things that happens is maybe we say, hmm, we want to restrict a certain page a certain way. How do we get that to honor that security? So if we create a new page here, we've got the option to have a public page, or in this case, we'd call this a login page. Now the login page, it took me a second when I was working through this. This doesn't mean here's the page that you actually log into. Here's the slash login on a website. This just means it's a page that requires a user be logged in. And what we can do is we can say, hey, all logged in users can have access to this page, or this is where we could limit that and say only project managers or we could say project managers and admins, but not the employees can see the information on this page. So I'm gonna do this. We don't actually have a dashboard that can show a report for our admins. Presumably we'd want to see some kind of reporting data on our current tasks that we have. So I limited this to only admins and I'm gonna keep it really simple, but I'll add a pie chart here. So I'll click on this and then I can configure this report on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to do this based on tasks. And then I want to group these tasks instead of by the tasks name, I want to do this by the status choices for that. And then instead of total record count, we're going to go by the total hours. So we can see roughly how many hours we need in each of those areas. I can save my changes. And now I have my nice pie chart that's reflected with my data here. Now, instead of being logged in as Sarah, I'm logged in as John, who's an admin. And John has a slightly different set of pages. He can see clients. He can see information about the projects holistically, not just the ones that are assigned to individual people. And we can see the new page that we just created for dashboard that reflects the different tasks that we have a report for. I hope this was helpful for you to see how NAC can really pack a punch being both your front end and back end of your no code application builder. Get started for your free trial today by using the link in the description below.